Okay. Yesterday we were talking about human conduct, and in human conduct, we talked about uh, in the last part about the policy in your institutional behavior, right? So, policy is the basis for responsible behavior in institutional conduct. So, when we say policy here or value or ethics, what we mean here is humane values, humane ethics and humane policy. So, we had talked about this. So, any questions about this? Any clarifications? Any comments? Any sharing? Take the mic. So, uh, I just wanted to share, like I was just thinking from throughout, I mean, I, uh, what we are talking, I certainly have shared with you personally also that I think I need one more to at least uh, think whether I can do this or I can't do this, but okay. it does make a lot of sense to me in terms that what we have learned since the first day to now when, like I was talking to you about why we were not talking the way trust is supposed to be, trust was told to us, yeah. but yesterday while I, while you were answering my question also, I, it kind of just connects with everything that if we are all looking for coexistence and if the common goal is going to be coexistence, then automatically the trust would be there. Yes. So, yeah, it all kind of, I can, I'm, there are still some unconnected dots, but some dots are connected for me. Right now. Okay. that can become the basis for further exploration. Yes. Okay. Yes, anybody else? While we wait for others to come, before I summarize the humane conduct. Pass the mic here, please. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to ask the question, but it's something to do with, you know, sometimes like someone doesn't, one person doesn't trust another, yes. but the per, the person who is being doubted feels that oh, I am trustworthy, but you don't trust because you have some whatever, insecurity or you, you have a wrong way of thinking. But like from, from my experience, I feel like actually if you're trustworthy, then that trust comes through. And so if someone doubts your trustworthiness, then therefore actually there is a lack of trustworthiness. It's almost like, like I don't know, that that's what it feels like. I don't know if this is true yeah. or not, but I'm just saying that if someone doubts you, that means that something in your behavior is off. Um, in your conduct is off or something. Like even with children, with dogs, with anyone actually. Yeah. If you are trustworthy, then that sense of trust comes through. So, yeah. I just had that thought. See, right now we use the word trust more in terms of faith. I have faith in you that you will do this. I have faith in you that you will not do this. Right? Or, so believing. It's at the level of believing. When trust comes with the understanding. So, when I know Vikas Bhai is like this, Right? So, I know what he can do and what he cannot do. So, I can, I trust both the parts. Right? That can only come through with the, on the basis of right evaluation. So, he, these are his abilities, he can do this part and these are his abilities where he cannot do this part. So, trust will also mean knowing what the other person cannot do, which is not doubting a person. Suppose somebody says, like, I, I'm, I want to do this. And it's a responsibility because we are talking about, say, in, uh, as a uh, part of an institution, suppose your family. So, then it can be explained to them, look, this is the evidence till now. You are standing here. So, you say you can do it, but there seems to be a lack of evidence of this. We can communicate, talk about it. Right? So, you need to 
further develop your skills in this area and then probably you can do it right so but that communication has to take place and if we were doing our mutual evaluation regularly then there will be confidence and trust about that this person does a does the right evaluation so that background has to be there without that this won't happen it can't happen in in an incident we build up the trust with living together right feels like right evaluation you know whether you see that in, in yourself or another that they can and can't do certain things if it comes from a, a place of understanding rather yes. than co- condemnation rather than yeah. judgment in a in a de- direct like oh you can't do this and right. you're not able to but actually it's like with with compassion understanding that this is oh, yes. not happened yet but yes. not that you're condemning them because of the right. unique, uh, lack then it's a whole different feeling no right. experience right. i guess yes i think she got the mic because she wanted to ask <laughs> and she's asking for the first time so <laughs> no i am asking not for the first time but <laughs> actually uh, uh my question is if uh, we have to naturally we uh, have to change our human conduct uh, our uh, relationship my question is should we change a social structure or um it should remain the same and we should change only the policy in case if we should change do you have a vision in the german vidium how it should be organized in a new way in a just way so that we can uh just to realize because many questions uh, were just about that there is some contradiction between our inner i mean uh, thoughts our inner attitude and even uh, relationship and the structure of this burden which uh, comes from the structure itself right. so do you have this vision yeah. yeah so today's topic is going to be about that only mostly we are going to talk about that but to answer it right now so most of the structures that we have are basically rooted in the uh, power centric dynamics where the, there is a central authority which has the power and that manages everything whether it's a family whether it's a local organization or at a state level organization everywhere there is a central authority and which dictates the terms of what has to be done right so yes this structure will change definitely change it can't we cannot have a uh, willful uh, alignments when there is some other authority which is imposing their dictates on you so yes the structure will but how that structure evolves we'll talk about it so and another thing from your question which comes about which we need to understand that thank you how are you feeling today oh good so another thing which we need to see is that we are talking about first the internal harmonizing like we have a v- observation we have the desires thinking and then we take decisions on basis of that we make our choices which leads to some actions right so first the um, habit of observing yourself which has to come in and you are observing then you will be able to evaluate your plans your desires your thoughts your choices your decisions in a much better way then when they translate into action then you can see the gaps or alignments between what you thought and what is actually happening so this helps you to again go back to understanding increase your awareness so that your um, uh, the decisions you are making are in alignment with the natural laws and therefore should be able to result in actions which are in alignment with the coexistence after your actions have impact on others again this is another part of observation in relationships we see what my actions are doing to the other so that is another part which can you can observe then again you can go back and check what needs to be corrected in this then our collective actions say for in a family are having an impact on the community so looking at them aligning them with the community in terms of coexistence that again is a thing then the community has impact on nature as well as the larger community society so like this step wise the observation will increase but 
this will only go forward once you start observing yourself. That habit has to come from within and it starts first with observing yourself, then you observe your in, uh, mental capacities, mental, fac um, mental faculties, then your actions, then the impact of those actions, then the uh, co uh, collaborative actions that you take, the impact of that. So, that evaluation will expand from here to there. So, that has to be known. Without this internal observation and evaluation, the outside will not function. Right now, what we are doing is, we are using that somebody will observe and evaluate and then tell everyone, this is what has to be done. They don't need to think about it. So, they become mechanical. And when things are mechanical in human beings, they are bound to be mistakes. And that's what we are ending up with. Right? So, we'll be going into more detail of this when we talk about the social structures, how they evolve. Okay. Right now, we are talking about the content of yesterday. So, any of you has any questions on this or any clarifications or any sharing? Right? Then I will just summarize this. Yes. I just wanted to add to um, that conversation on trust that I think what you mentioned was whether that if uh, a person is capable of... Just rotate the thing from the bottom. Hello? Huh. That if the uh, other person is capable of something, trust would mean recognizing them as they are. Yes. If they're capable of it, you'll trust that they're capable of it. If they're incapable of it, you'll trust that they're incapable of it. Yes. I think confusion arises when um, one is <coughs> indefinite in one's behavior. Yeah. In fact, you can only trust that which is definite. Yeah. So, a lot of trust comes from indefinite behavior. Unpredictable nature. Right? We keep talking about So, therefore, res taking responsibility makes us definite. Right? And responsibility is not an event-based thing. Like, the food has to be provided in the family. So, somebody who takes the responsibility may ensure that there is food every day. Whether the outside conditions are conducive or not, this has to be arranged for. Right? So, that is responsibility. Responsibility is not, when things are okay, I will do it. When things are not okay, I will not do it. That is not responsibility. Right? So, that definiteness comes from take understanding, being aware why, why this is need to, needs to be done and then taking the responsibility and doing it. So, what we talked about, like every child has to grow up into a learned and responsible person. Learned person is one who can see the need of the situation understands the need of the situation and then has the ability to fulfill. So, that is, that is how responsibility will flow and that will give the definite conduct, definite conduct in terms of humane values, humane ethics and humane policy. So, so this becomes the basis of definite conduct. This is the minimum beautiful. That needs to be known. We can expand on this much more. With, if this is in the base, this is the foundation, then there is a lot of space for creativity. Right? So, anybody, any clarification, any questions or any uh, comments on what we talked yesterday? Okay, let's go to the human conduct first slide. So, initially when we started our discussion on Jeevan Vidya, we presented it as an alternative to materialism, idealism and we, these are too prevalent and this is an alternative to that. In that we had said the way of living happily or happen, uh, living full of happiness is humane conduct, humanness. So, humanness is fulfilling all responsibilities and supporting others on the path of growth for harmony. Rootedness in humanness is a result of spiritual awareness. So, spiritual awareness comes through knowledge, education. right? And then, once we are, the more aware we become, we start evaluating our actions in these areas, in relationships, in social spheres and institutions. And, 
on basis of these now that we have the knowledge that humane values human ethics and human policy are the basis for responsible conduct right so we keep checking for whether we are in alignment with the values are we able to live these values are we able to live this ethics and are we able to live this policy and wherever there are gaps we address them right what are values in relationships that's nyay or justice right so and justice is basically when i am ensure that in relationships my part or my end of responsibilities are being fully fulfilled this is the sense of nyay or justice that needs to be known what is ethics that i am providing a safe environment for fellow beings whether they are humans or animals so within human domain how i take acquire wealth this can affect others like for example we talked about cruelty cruelty is in three dimensions which is damaging somebody's resources damaging somebody's state of resources damaging somebody's state of health and damaging somebody's state of mental balance all three constitute cruelty so when you take somebody's wealth money object something which is prevalent right now in society whether directly indirectly th- through deceit this is all part of cruelty and this is this the wealth which we accumulate like this is illicit wealth right and if we work and generate wealth for us serves our families through proper means socially accepted means fair means then that is our righteous wealth and then how do you provide the second security which is in terms of man woman relationship right we allow people of all genders to feel safe with us in terms of sexual behavior right the people should not feel unsafe with us and that will happen if we have a definite sexual behavior right so we have partners with whom we are loyal and with others we provide a safe space so that is the righteous spouse otherwise it will be illicit relationships will germinate and our society is suffering because of this and this causes a lot of problems right and the third is kind behavior and work right this is basically we talked about what kindness is in terms of animals in terms of humans right and this again is providing safe space to animals as well a fellow beings right without rudeness without cruelty giving a conducive environment so that work and behavior can go on properly right in absence of this there will be cruelty so this is ethics right in social spheres then we come to the last part which is the policy which is right utilization of and protection of assets assets are mind body and wealth so mind body and wealth right utilization and right uh protection of them how to pro- keep them safe so that they are uh, why do we need to keep them safe protection is for continuity continuity is the ultimate truth right so we are here for a short time we are utilizing some resources we need to ensure the same resources at least or more resources are available for the future generations right now we are doing the reverse we are not protecting the resources we are in fact stealing from our future generations right so that's that is a protection is needed yes uh, uncle is policy here something which comes from the institution or from the individual so policy exists Indi- individuals identify it and align themselves groups identify it align themselves and organizations identify it and align them so it's a natural policy yes so the whole design of this workshop is pointing towards the the natural design here the we started with the statement that there is a role for humans in nature nature is purposeful there is purpose for human beings and there is natural design for human beings right so but um, in line with this question we 
we were discussing with Harish ji yesterday. Yeah. Um, this is the basic fundamental policy, but then a group having recognized this collectively their uh, particular needs could come up with a more comprehensive some some structure some particulars essentially yeah. so this is what i was just now i don't know whether you were here at that day this is the minimum beautiful okay it can be much more beautiful than this you can add up on this this is the foundation foundation structure is this and on that you can build up without violating your foundation if you violate your foundation everything will collapse The policy in natural design, I didn't understand this. In the sense, whether you are in this generation or say thousand years back, will this be true? That this has to be done? Right utilization and protection of assets? So this is a universal thing. That sense. So any universal thing humans are not creating. We are just identifying it and there's a gravity we don't create. It is the principle is there, we can become aware in it and start aligning ourselves according to that. Right? That is the what is being said. Okay? So, that was the summary of, yes please, Vinjan, take the mic. Uh, so, I understand there is a contradiction in life, but uh, so there was one uh, the the values. One of the values on the left hand side was contentment. Hmm. So uh, if I feel, for example, if I feel I want to align myself and my life with all these values, then I need, then I have to take uh, some steps which might come in conflict with maybe my own family member. So, but if you think that. Uh, if I think that contentment is the highest value and I try to bring align myself with contentment, on the other hand, I'm uh, being uh, ambitious that, you know, okay, this is the place where I want to reach. Mm. So uh, are these contradictory or are these um, They're not contradictory. They're not contradictory at all. First of all, these four... You can't do happiness, you can't do peace, you can't do contentment, you can't do bliss. It's not a doing. It's not an action. Uh, I can't do, but... Uh, it's a result. Can I train myself for contentment? That is what I'm saying. You, that is doing only, no? So, what do you train yourself for? Then? What do you practice? Right? So, you practice harmony, living in harmony. This is the result. To practice living in harmony, this is the attitude you need to have. This is the nature you need to have. These are the qualities you need to have. Then, when you are interacting, these are the things which you have to keep in mind. Whether respect is taking place, trust is taking place. Okay, this is the checkpoints. The, these are the points of harmony. If you have gratitude, it will result in harmony. It will take you away from disharmony and bring you towards harmony. If you have admiration, it will bring you towards harmony with each other. Right? So these are things which are to be practiced. Right? When you practice this and that, which is for the body, you your nature comes closer to this. When you this becomes your true nature, this is what it results in. Okay? That is the key thing to remember. Now, the coming to the question of conflict. Now, when you are interacting with somebody with respect in you for that person, do you think there is a conflict? Is there any possibility of a conflict if you are able to rightly respect the person? Rightly respect the other person. Which is, as I defined here, what we were talking about. Respect how it is, right? Based in right evaluation, knowing the person, understanding their like ability. rightly respect the other person and not getting into argument, not uh, disagree with what they are saying. No, no. 
you are going back to the idealistic way of looking at things. What did we talk about respect here? Check your notes. So, respect is basically the right evaluation, behavior based on right evaluation. When what you are becomes clear to me and then I respond on basis of that, that is respect. So, your abilities as well as areas where you do not have abilities, both are clear to me. So, I interact with you with keeping that in mind. Would this create any conflict between you and me? See, when we say respect, you are looking at it from what it is the prevalent meaning of the word is. Like, there is elder person, then we should not speak in front of them or touch their feet or this. We are not talking about that respect here. We are talking about a new culture. New culture in terms of now, we before we I interact with say Aksha, I bring to mind what I know about her. Like we were doing the yesterday for your birthday, this is what I have noticed about you. So, keep that in forefront and then because I am noticing you all the time. So, there is an image of you I have in me. So, make that basis of interaction. What is happening is we have because we are trained of having expectation based on what we think you are supposed to do. This is where all the arguments and all the conflicts arise. You are not even aware what I expect of you. My expectations are coming from my some wild imagination about you. Like maybe suppose in, we are in a family and uh, you are a daughter and there are certain behavior expected of daughter according to tradition. So, I have those expectations. So, humans will always be of expect full of expectation and these expectations either come from the traditional belief systems, prevalent belief systems or they will come from your awareness in them. So, here we are saying study the human being which is you and you see understand it with the this framework of coexistence, then you will start forming the expectations. That is why we talked about in a relationship there is a definite purpose, definite activities, definite responsibilities and expectations. Okay. So, anyway, this will register slowly in you, settle in you slowly and there might be some gaps because you were not there at some in for a few days, right. So, but you can get a uh, glimpse of the fact that we are talking about a new way of approaching things. What is the new way? Study yourself as a human being. On basis of that, study the other person, become aware in things. How to study? There is a framework on basis of which we are talking. This is the proposed framework, how to study human. We talked about body and mind or body and jivan. Then we talked about the characteristics of jivan, characteristics of body, all that things we have talked about here. Right? So, from studying yourself, then studying the relationship, the, the purpose of relationships, purpose of family, purpose of community, society, that we will be covering today also. Maybe this question is not in context or maybe it is, but I will still ask. Yeah. So, uh, when you, uh, so is it always, I mean, not is it, so uh, if you try to be your authentic uh, self or try to speak what is on your mind, so uh, sometimes it uh, can feel that the other person will be threatened, feel threatened by it. And uh, if you're assuming their expectations, then you have this uh, fear that you know, really speaking, what's on your mind or uh, being your authentic self can uh, make this person feel threatened. So then, uh, it's is it always right to be your authentic self, or is it right to pretend in front of people who you know that they will not appreciate what your uh, or it's your assumption they will not appreciate what you're going to say. So, auth being authentic self is basically a function of your realized self. 
whatever you have realized in life and realizations are about universal truths they are not about transitory things right so whatever your realizations are when you live those realizations then you are authentic so right now what you are talking about what you are feeling in this moment whether it is balanced feelings or agitated feelings just say it this is what you are calling authentic self right so if they are agitated feelings they will result in agitation in the other so that's why we talked about whenever we have to communicate first we have to see are we in the normal state in a calm state normal state is non agitated states in which you can observe yourself you can observe the other right and then what you communicate is on basis of values like we talked about gratitude and gentleness so if you bring forth the gratitude towards that person then even if you are saying something which might be tough for the other person to hear but you will be able to speak it with gentleness all fear in us is because of lack of awareness if you are feeling fear it's basically you are lacking some understanding and awareness about yourself about relationships about community anything there are three areas knowledge of self knowledge of the world and knowledge of ha- living happily so out of the three or from ha huh? other comes in the knowledge of the world right any fear in us is rooted in lack of awareness or lack of knowledge okay shall we move ahead so that was the summary of humane conduct okay. i mean i was just because we were talking about respect again yeah. i thought yeah please i must i f- uh, rotate it from the bottom and then Hello? leave it ah. so the the definition that we're talking about is only part <coughs> is only partly the definition right respect is um the right the recognition of the greatness in the personality and talents of a person yeah and that's why and specific recognition and that's why it leads to amicability yeah yeah this is very important so when we do right evaluation we celebrate the abilities of the person we acknowledge them and feel joy for that just like a mother or father feels joy for whatever child keeps learning right so that is part of respect and that will be giving you amicable behavior so if we don't acknowledge what the other person is able to do we do not um uh, enjoy that part we don't celebrate that part then there will be a, a distance between the two people okay let's go to that slide of uh, uh samadhan samriddhi so now with all that we have talked now we are going to talk about how we get organized on basis of this right so before doing that we need to understand human goal how it translates in the living form we talked about your human goal as universal goal which is the continuity of nature which is a very generic thing and continuity of human kind but how is this achieved so the human goal is achieved through and we have three columns one is the present state then is the proposed goal and then the what is realized if it is we are successful in living this the impact of that in the jeevan or in self right okay first one as individuals there is confusion confusion basically means lack of clarity of the three questions
fundamental questions which define knowledge. We are not clear about what I am, we are not clear about what this world is, and we are not clear how to live happily. So, this state is being called confusion. So, we use our belief systems, our guesswork to deal with situation from time to time. And because there is no clarity, sometimes it results in happiness, most of the time it results in unhappiness, right? That is the present state. So, the proposal here is through understanding, coming to a state of resolve, state of resolution. So, spend some time in understanding things and becoming aware of what is, what is the human being, what is this quick the system around us we, that we call world, what is it? Is it a coexistential system or not? So, become aware in that and become aware in the, the responsible way of living in human conduct. Once you start becoming aware in this, this resolution starts taking place. It starts giving you, okay, this is the thing which is to be done here. So, you get sense of right and wrong now. With these understandings, you start getting a sense of right and wrong. So, when you know clearly, this is the right, this is the wrong, then you can choose, right? And this is being called the state of resolution. Another way of saying this is that in any given situation, knowing what to do, why to do, how to do, when to do and how much to do, this is resolution. This will come with the basic level of un understanding about self, coexistence and human conduct. Before that, it will not happen. Okay? And when this, when we start living this in a, a definite manner, it becomes part of our nature, then in our conscious, we start experiencing happiness. Living this is translated in terms of happiness in Jeevan. So, we live this as a human being, resolution, and the Jeevan keeps, stays in the state of happiness. So, resolution is equal to happiness. That is the main thing in this. Okay. Next. At the level of families, there is strife, conflicts. Right? What is this conflict about? Are you asking something? No. Okay. What is this conflict about? The conflict is about what are my rights? What are my responsibilities? What are your rights? What is your responsibility? There is no clarity on this. So, we are overstepping or we are underdoing our role, under contributing in family. This is the cause of strife in family. So, unless until we understand our rights and our responsibilities and we, un we can't only understand our rights and responsibility, to this, any right or responsibility can only be understood in the terms of the systems you are part of. So, you have to understand the family. To understand the rights and responsibilities of family, you have to understand the community. To understand the rights and responsibility of community, you have to understand the society. So, this way it goes on till you understand the whole world. Right? Now, what are we looking at? We are looking at a family as an individual. So, what are my rights? What are your rights? In reference to family, we can determine that. What are my responsibilities? What are your responsibilities? On basis of relationships, we can determine that. Now, this becomes a common thing between us and we can work towards living together on basis of this. And when we start living successfully on basis of this, then we are able to arrange for our Material needs, emotional needs, psychological need, doing things together in every manner. This state where we are able to fulfill families, all round needs, material and non-material, that state is called prosperity. When a family lives in prosperity, the members of the family feel the peace in their conscience. There is no other way of feeling peace in any other place. When people are fulfilling their responsibilities, 
and they are getting all their rights and they are living in harmony with each other. That is the way peace is achieved. Right? And the evidence of that is everybody's requirements, everybody's needs are being fulfilled. Whether we are talking about in the terms of family or a community or a nation, nation is built up of so many communities. So, everybody's rights, everybody's responsibility, they are being fulfilled. Right? But nation is too big right now. So, first we have to learn to do this in families. And when everybody's needs are being fulfilled, that state is being called prosperity. So, and we all want prosperous families, where all the material needs and non-material needs are being met. Right? And not only met in the terms of the need is being met, everybody is doing according to their abilities and responsibilities. So, everybody is contributing in it. It is not that some are contributing and some are just exploiting, which is the present structure. Right? And this cannot happen without people with a resolution. Without resolution, this prosperity cannot occur. So, family members who are in a state of awareness and therefore can respond to any situation, these are the people who will align themselves in form of a prosperous family. Not less than that. Third, society. So, society is presently in fear. If we look, how secure do we feel in the society? Security in terms of our wealth, security in terms of our bodies, or security in terms of my mind. Everything is under threat. Right? So, what do we want? We want fearlessness. That can only happen when we, our conducts are such, they provide a safe place to each other. How can anybody's conduct provide safe place when people live in resolution and live in with prosperity? Right? That means they are already fulfilling their responsibilities. Therefore, they don't have the sense of there's something lacking in my life. Such people are able to provide security in community. Right? If I, yes. So my question is: Isn't fear more of an individual state too? Right. Individual, at level of individual, at level of family, at level of communities, All at level of nations. Every day, if you open the newspaper, this is what you read. This community will take over, that community will take over. We must protect ourselves. But also at the individual stage, because most of us aren't able to move out of fear at that yes. individual stage. Yeah. And everything else, I think, is related to yes. the individual stage. True, true. So, this fear psychosis in large numbers is basically rooted in absence of resolution in individuals. That is the cause. Yesterday we talked about fear, four types of fears, how to come out of that we talked about. Right? So, such individuals and that was basically the answer was the spiritual awakening or being aware of yourself and the coexistence and humane conduct. When you become aware in that, then you lose all your fear. And such fearless people form the prosperous families and a fearless community and society. Right? So, these insecurities in the society is because as individuals we are insecure. You are right about that. And therefore, we participate in the fear psychosis which is projected by some people. So, when the society starts showing fearlessness, the members of that community, society, start having content. Not less than this. Right? So, this is a function of feeling secure in a larger number. 
without this there is no contentment because otherwise you will always feel oh i have to do this this won't be sufficient because the environment is not secure right why are we having too many savings what will be happen in the future we don't know right so there can be no contentment in an insecure environment content meant can only be experienced in a secure environment whether we live with minimum we means or we live with maximum means if it is an insecure environment we can never be content there will be some sort of anxiety in the background okay next at the level of planet the human race relationship with the rest of the nature is in imbalance now we all can see the impact of that right global warming climate change pollution so many issues we need to be in coexistence most of our imbalance is being caused because we are not resolved as individuals because we are not prosperous families therefore we think we'll exploit the nature more and get, get something for a family because we are not fearless we are insecure we are not content so more and more exploitation this is what is causing this so till the time these three states fulfill this cannot happen so the real problem if you look at this is the human human problem because of the human human problem they the imbalance in human human problem is being projected upon the nature our relationship with the nature right so unless until we become cohesive amongst ourselves this cannot be correct but once it is corrected we are in coexistence that is when we experience bliss that is the completeness we talked about relationship relationships are for growth and completeness this is another way of looking at completeness so we basically want to be want to realize happiness peace contentment and bliss and the way to do this is this at these four levels if we don't do do that we'll be in this okay so you can examine whether as an individual are you in confusion or resolution as a family are in strife or prosperity as a community or society are in fear about amongst each other or are you fearless secure and as a planet a relationship with their nature is in balance or imbalance so we basically for everybody these are the goals which we have to work for this is being called proposed human goal and this is in alignment of what we talked about earlier the universal goal which is basically continuity of nature and continuity of, of human kind right this will ensure the continuity of human kind these three and because this works therefore this will be ensured so this becomes a goal for any human child born today born millions of years back or millions of years ahead always to be aligned with this any questions on that any comments on this yeah so again it all boils down to the fact that for i can only change myself and uh, i i to can't even take guarantee of my family then <laughs> i mean i can just but it feels like an impossible thing to achieve like because until i am happy i will not be able to aspire for a prosperity for my family and then reach to a level where there's fearlessness so coexistence is like i will be dead by the time <laughs> we reach there 
yeah so wherever then that means you're standing somewhere here right now right so you can can you work for this so that means the first thing we need to know ourselves myself and we need the awareness of myself and knowledge then we can go for further yeah, yeah. so the first thing is at the level of individual i need to li live with resolution resolution is living in human conduct so how do i come into human conduct when i understand order in humans and order in nature both things i have to understand not only the human part right this is where space and matter also becomes important at time right maybe not it is not interesting to you right now which is okay you can pay more attention to the area where is uh, you have lot more interest but eventually you will have to come back to unless until the picture is complete it won't work for you or for anyone understanding is not in parts understanding is always of the complete that is a thing to know you can't have knowledge of in bits and pieces knowledge is undivided unified thing okay so first we'll work from coming from confusion to resolution this is a journey for for every human child right we said since birth the child wants to be just uh, want people to be just to him and but doesn't know how to be just with them from birth the child wants to do the right but doesn't know the difference between right and wrong and the child is speaks the truth but doesn't is not aware in what the truth is right so these three are indicating of this and we have to come from there to here so ability to be just ability to dis discern right from wrong and the ability to know the truth that is what will bring you to resolution Yes, please, Mike. Um, so I was wondering uh, when um, you have these goals. Sorry, um, I wonder if you have any um, like where the in the human values, what values would be in resolution, and what values would be in prosperity, and so on. I know. wondered if you had any like matchups for. There is, there is details. But if we go into that right now, then we'll miss out on the content we want to talk about. But okay. there is, there is placement of what values will be. See, this will be at the level of family. This will happen more or less together, right? So for living in a family, we talked about uh, resoluteness. We talked about courage and generosity. This will happen with that nature, that quality. and depending on the relationship the again we said certain values are there in some relationships certain values are there so there is a whole thing which can be understood very good question yeah because that is how we have to go about it yeah i am sorry i can't remember what were the four kinds of fear if uh, we can the slide again or something yeah. can you can anybody else help any the four kinds of fears okay tell the three i'll add use the mic please for everyone now i'm being a school teacher fear of death fear of losing reputation and fear of losing wealth yeah and the fourth was fear of losing losing the position, position in society But reputation and position are different yes okay. like you suppose you are the monitor of the class or you are the prefect in school or you are the head boy head girl right so you might lose your position because of somebody else that fear is also there reputation is your character I can't remember if we covered this, but it, this 
is interesting because all these fears are a result of trying to seek continuity in these four things yeah. when there is none. Yeah. That is very interesting point. So, fear is losing. So, losing uh, death, the fear of death is basically this, my living will stop. I want to continue, but I don't know how to continue it. Therefore, the fear. Right? My wealth, I want to continue, but I am not sure how it will continue. So, that fear, because of the lack of knowledge is, that is the fear of losing wealth. Similarly, for reputation, similarly for the position in society. Okay. Got your answer? Now, let us go to the next. Now, that the human goal is set, right. So, everybody has to work for resolution, everybody has to work for prosperity, fearlessness and coexistence in a stepwise manner, right. No, move on, this we have talked about, right. So, now we need to organize ourselves, right. So, for an organization, the minimum level of living so, minimum level of organization is a family, right. There are 5, 6, 10 people living together and they are fulfilling their combined needs. The needs is basically are defined in terms of food, shelter, clothing, transportation, telecommunication, right, these kind of needs. But the resources for this come from the community. Right? If it is a industrialized society, it will be a different sort of a community. If it is a rural uh, community, it will be have different kind of resources. But resource generation, one family can probably create one or two or three, just a few resources, right? But we need lot more resources. So, for living models, you will have a local community minimum level of living is, because they are the three basics for the body, food, shelter and clothing, these can be addressed. For this, you will have a local community organization. For that, you need five systems, five systems, okay. Then we will go to this part. So, what are these five systems which are needed? So, this first one is the education, right. Education for learning, right, for awareness, a system for that is needed, right. Then second is system for health, see one is for jivan, one is for body. So, these are both needed. So, health system is needed, education system is needed. Then the third is for production, because we need to consume resources every day. So, we need some production, we need some food, some clothing, some shelter. So, there needs to be systems for this. Whatever we are producing, that needs to be exchanged in a fair manner. So, we need a system for exchange, right. And in all this, humans are interacting. And there are bound to be places, where we will need to sit down and understand, if it is fair or not. So, we need to have a justice system, right. From community level to international level, these are the five systems, minimum five systems, which are needed for human living. Because human living is collaborative, that we talked about in the beginning. The collaboration happens on basis of these five systems. Because this is needed for living in happiness, living in prosperity, living in fearlessness, and living in coexistence. These are the five systems which are needed. Okay. 
So, if we are a local community, suppose we are a village here, we are living. So, some people will start working for the education system and the others will support them. Some people will start working for the health of the community, others will support them. Some people will work for productions, right? And I am not adding that this is all in light of coexistence, right? I am not talking about the prevalent system, we are talking about the coexistential system. in which if you want to participate as a responsible person in the education system, your qualification will be that you have resolution, you have knowledge or in other words, you have at least resoluteness, courage and generosity. छोड़ दो ना बोलने से आ गया बाद में लिख के भेज देंगे नॉलेज देन नो स्टार्ट विथ रेजोल्यूटनेस करेज एंड दैट इज द क्वालिटी ह्यूमन क्वालिटीज विच आर नीडेड अच्छा यू यू आर गोइंग देयर ओके दिस पार्ट आल्सो इज दिस इज वन सेक्शन Let's let's talk about this. This is important. In Hindi, we call it samajdari se imandari, imandari se jimedari, jimedari se bhagidari. In English, it is from knowledge comes honesty, from honesty comes responsibility, sense of responsibility, and with the sense of responsibility, we can participate or contribute. Participation, I make it contribution. contribution right. without knowledge you will not honestly evaluate your responsibility the problem is honesty in evaluation right which comes from knowledge when knowledge and honesty are there then you can clearly identify your responsibility. I am in this family, I am in this workshop, I am in this community, I am in this nation. You will be able to clearly identify your responsibility in all these spheres. And when you identify your responsibility, fulfilling your responsibility is your contribution. That is how you participate in the larger system. Right? So, we were talking about participation. Go back to the previous. One. So these to participate in education, we should have clearly identified our responsibility, for which we need to be honest, for which we need to be knowledgeable. Without this, it won't happen. And this is the key for this whole system we are talking about. Right now, people are sitting in these positions have no clue why they are doing something, for what they are doing something, then they, in the end it boils down to your personal benefits or your benefit for your family or your benefit for the group you represent, that is it. There is no universal goals there. That is the problem. So, you are always working for vested interest. Whether you are in education, in health, production, trade, justice, everywhere there is just vested interest. Whereas these systems will function for everyone, only when you have clear sense of responsibility, which cannot come without honesty, which cannot come without knowledge. That looks interesting. Would you like to share? Um, we were discussing this like one on I think the first day during lunch time on what the basis is for being able to for a system to for a system to 
be able to function p- with participants dis- deliberating evaluating honestly what needs to be done what needs to be reevaluated and uh, refigured out and so you know how what makes it possible and why is it so difficult to do that You all have worked in some sort of organizations, right? In terms of work, right? Most of you have. So, like some of us have worked in the educational institutions, right? So, do you think need people who are aware of their responsibilities in the larger sense? Do they need to have that vision or not? Right? And that vision will only come through knowledge. Nothing less than that. besides vision also because uh, in the absence of knowledge we have so many concerns but since we don't have clarity they it's at times seem at odds with each other yeah. so we have to compromise on one yeah. for in favor of the yeah. other so yeah. we can't be honest yeah. in in conversations regarding the yeah. one that is low priority yeah without the overall vision things are very patchy and whichever patch you favor you you start moving in that direction but that ign- leads to ignorance of something else right so unless and you until you understand the whole system you cannot come into a coordinated action where all the everything is addressed what needs more attention what needs less attention what needs to be done first what needs to be done later all these things but become clear with knowledge and honesty right so these are the five systems which are needed to live as human beings okay now these five systems can function from various levels from a village level to say a group of villages to a say a district say to a state to a nation international so here the multi leveler organization in human beings becomes relevant so in this we talk about 10 levels of human organization humans human organizations will be at 10 levels right and we are taking at every level the committee or the assembly there will be assembly for every level which will consist of 10 people only at every level at all 10 levels right so let's start say from your family family is a bunch of people who are in a relationship but it is also an organization so there are a lot of decisions which need to be taken so it also has to act like an assembly where everybody is represented in that so suppose there are three four generations living together because now the our discussion about life stages become important families are places where people grow from babyhood or infancy to elderly age families need to have space for all ages so if we acknowledge that then we will have three four generations at least living together right so such a size of family would be say from 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 somewhere so let's take an average number of 10 so there's a family which has about say four generation or three generation 10 people are living together so a lot of decision need to be taken from time to time to time so they need to be in practice of coming together and deciding so there is a family assembly and they sit down together everybody is equal the process of decision making is everybody gets opportunity to say that because there are only 10 people everybody can be given a chance like we did for 20 people in this everybody could speak right so 10 people sit down talk about issues give their basis because knowledge is the basis they have a framework they can decide and come to a decision right next level is group of 10 families and one representative from each family this representative is chosen is nominated from the family from time to time right 
it is not a fixed representative, say for 2 years, 3 years, 5 years, you can nominate somebody, or every year you nominate it and people can be representing there. Right? So, one representative from one family, one representative from the other family, a group of 10 families can decide about the neighborhood, how we are going to live together, there are decisions needed to be taken in that aspect. Right? Now, 10 groups of such, we could call it a village, small village, about 100 families. Right? So, a group of 100 families is basically 10 family groups. The assembly at that level has one representative from each, each 10 family group, one representative. Right? Again, there are 10 people, they can sit down, talk, talk about everything, everybody gets chance to speak, everybody is able to share. Right? If you look at this model and look at the present model, like our parliament right now, the members of parliament who are elected to say Lok Sabha, there are 540 odd members, which represent how much population? Hmm? Say 1.2 billion. So, for each constituency, how many people are they representing? <laughs> A lot. Very good answer. <laughs> do not need to do calculation. Okay. The number is not important. The idea, general idea. Suppose, this representative was supposed to discuss issues of each family, say, forget each individual, and wants to dedicate only 5 minutes to each family. Now, that you are doing calculation, say, divide that number which you got by 10, what is that number? Say that aloud in the mic. 2,22,222. Okay, if hundred thousands was the term you were using instead of lakhs? Two hundred and twenty-two thousand. Families, right? Because we clump ten people, divided by ten, so that it represents one family. So, these many families, and for each family, they, we wanted to spend five minutes talking to them. How many minutes would he need? Just multiply that number by five. One million. Uh, around uh, more than 1 million. Okay. Minutes. Divide that by 60, number of hours that person will need? 18,000 hours, 18,518 hours. Right. Divide it by 24, number of days? Uh, 771 days. 700. So, approximately 2 years. 2 years, if he is not eating, sleeping, doing anything, just to get to know what that family needs. How can this be a representative system? Right? Yeah. How would uh, representatives be chosen in this system? Nominated by the assembly of 10. Be amongst 10 people, you can come to a consensus, but in 500, it is not easy. And these are t 10 people, who are, who have got the nature of resoluteness, courage and generosity, who deal with each other with trust and respect, then only. So, a nomination is not a vote? Not a vote. It is a nomination. Consensus. Who is the most appropriate right now? Amongst the family, one can decide, huh? Huh? Two years, if aaj ka MP ko, har parivar ko panch minute dene, baat karne ke liye. To subeh se shram tak, 24 ghante bhi wo deta hai, to do saal lag jayenge, keval sunne ke liye ki kya, kaun kaan, kya chahata hai. Na to uske baas sunne ke time hai, na khane ka time hai, na peene ka time hai, na toilet ka time hai. Right? 
So, what will the representative do? It will represent only a few people, that is what they do. Huh? No, see they do not even think in those, they do not want to listen to anyone, they said this is stupid, I will listen to my family, my friends, maybe a group of say my caste or my religion or something, some representatives of that. Yeah. Would this full time occupation for the representative? No, no, never, it is not an occupation, it is a social service a social service which is done on basis of prosperity in your family. Your material needs are being fulfilled in your family and because we are a family of say 10, uh, 2, 3 are children, 2, 3 are elderly, but 4, 5 are there who are capable, out of that one is going to become the representative or the elderly person can become the representative, but their material needs will be taken by this family. Elderly person has already contributed in this family during his working days. So, he has enough capital, the social capital as well as uh, material capital to invest on basis of which he can do the social service. So, there is going to be no money given for this at all, right. It is for your joy, because you want to see this, the community to rise up, that is what it is meant for. Right now, you see the parliament sits down, every day they increase their salaries, they pass a law, nobody can challenge them. <laughs> so, it is a 10 tier system like this. If you look at 10 by 10, 10 raised power 10, that is 10 billion can be addressed in this, can be represented in this. Was there a process for through which the number 10 was figured out? Easy to do the calculation for the time. I mean, if there are 8 people, how does it matter? If there are 12 people? No, because, uh, I was curious only because it is a even number, so it might be harder for 10. Huh? It should be 11, ideally. 10 is an even number? Even number. Even number. So, it can be like, uh, if there is a consensus to be reached, it can be the case that 5 people and 5 people are supporting. Uh, like a consensus is not voting, no, it is not like so you discuss and come to the same conclusion, that is a consensus and we are talking about people who are willing to listen to each other, yeah. So, so if it I am saying 10, it can be 8 or it can be 12, that is not the issue. Understand the, the spirit of it. So, basically the issues which a family needs to handle, they can handle on their own by representing everybody. The uh, issues of the neighborhood can be uh, handled by the 10 family group, their local issues. Then there are some local community group, they can be handled by the committee of 10 which represents. So, everybody is represented. So, say in a tiered system, every citizen is representative at the world level in 10 steps. In a local village, every citizen is being represented in two steps. So, getting your voice through to one person, your message to one person, if this is needed and to the other person is very simple. 10 is a very accessible thing, I mean 10 or 9 or 8, whatever, it is a simple doable thing. This, this large representation I mean, one representative for so many lakhs of people, this does not work, there is no representation there. So, therefore, everybody knows that the person will only be working for vested interest, so they go and lobby with them, uh, you, you become, we will make you the parliamentarian, you have to do this for us, we will give you the funds. So, all elections are basically funded money is determining who is going to win, who is going to lose. So, there is no representation. So, this is a 10 level thing and the decision making is with discussion on basis of understanding and the needs of things. Now, the important thing in this is the representation does not work one way, 
like I have been nominated by you to go and represent somewhere. Now, the issues raised there, talking, we are talking about, we are doing discussions. Now, the, rep the responsibility of the representative is to communicate this back. Backward feedback has to be there. Then the opinion comes from, okay, maybe this is what. So, then, so this is working horizontally also and vertically also. The system is taking feedback vertically also, people they represent, and also amongst the 10 people who are representing the various other groups. So, it is not only 10 people deciding actually, it is 100 or 1000, 10,000, they are deciding through the representative system. Yes, please. Mike? So, that means it follows in our organizations also like in our offices. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have two projects running. So, five people and five people there. So, one of the representative go for the management meeting, so discuss something. And then the management team, the one leader went for the, uh, what is that? Uh, higher level. Mm. There. So, that is also there. Yeah, yeah. Good. So, some samples of this we have seen already happening. The main thing is, in what spirit is this person working? That is the key, where individual realization is the important part. When you are becoming a representative, then you need to have spiritual awakening. You cannot be a representative without that. Because then you will get influenced. Influenced by the transitory things. Yes. How organized is this within the family? So is the family supposed to have a representative? Which then deals with? So, 10 people, 10 people are a family. They sit down and talk about things. And now from them, one is nominated to go and represent the family in the 10 family group. Even within the family, there is some representative, yeah. official, in, in some sense official who deals with the upper tier. Yes. Yeah. And this also changes. Present model, I am not seeing anyone, anyone in my family go represent anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, there is, I think, there is mismatch then yeah. in present situation. No, but if you look at the local government organizations, your local level organizations, like RWAs, right, or a village panchayat, there we can have this kind of a system very easily. We do not have it right now, but it's, it does not seem that difficult. Okay. In fact, the family is the fundamental unit. That is the very big key difference over here. Yeah. That is the, it is the family that is the fundamental unit of organization. Yeah. You cannot skip that. In fact, in individual is not the unit. The family is the unit. Because individual's behavior, it is like a subatomic particle on its own has random motion. But when it is part of a of an atom, atom is the basic unit of organization in nature, then it has a coordinated motion, a regulated motion. Similarly, an individual outside family does not have a coordinated motion or regulated motion. It is with the, in terms of aligning yourself in the family that you become uh, responsible and therefore, you have a definite nature. So, the Real representation is of the family. And family is based on trust, respect, love, affection, all those values. That's why we are saying individual and family. If you if things work out here, rest is easy. That is the fundamental work that it needs to be done. If that is not done, then other organizations won't because your building blocks are weak. If we have to make a building and we are using bricks which are weak, the building will collapse. Right? So, the building block of society is family. Okay. So, this 10 tier system, right, and at every level, there are only 10 people who have to 
decide things and they're representing the lower level and they're communicating back to the lower and taking the feedback and this is going on like this and this level is doing it with its lower level and talking like this. So every level people are connected horizontally and vertically. That is the organization that we are talking. So, decision making, which is the most important part, collective decision making, which takes place in the assembly. So, the prerequisite or a qualification to become a part of assembly, then becomes you need to be a realized person. Less than that, you will not be able to do it. You won't be able to carry the responsibility with you. Because you will get uh, swayed by the transitory things, the vested interest. They will start influencing you. Because at any level, there is certain sense of power which also comes, because you are representing other. That you have to self-regulate. You know, this, this sense, I can make decisions for others, but it has to be for the well-being of all. So this sense will only come if you are realized, not before that. This is the graphical representation of this. Sir, I have a doubt. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, the person needs to be a realized person. So, for example, now I have the knowledge uh, about it, little bit. Information. Information. Information <laughs> is the words which you have. These words have a definite meaning. Meaning is basically the sense of reality. See, there are three things. One is reality, like this bottle, is a real thing. When in English, I represent it with the word bottle, right? In other languages, it will be other thing. So, bottle, when I say the word, it's either a sound in the spoken form or a shape in the written form, right? Any shape or sound which it has which has a meaning is known as word. So, there is a meaning. Meaning is perceived by us, which is in our imagination. So, when I am saying bottle, in your imagination, immediately that image comes. So, you know the meaning. Right? So, when the meaning in your imagination is same as the reality in the existence, that is called knowledge. Right? When the meaning is something else and the reality is something else, it can be blind faith. I think this is so, but it doesn't match with reality. So, for the reality check, then I have to come back to the, the theory. See, theory is merely information. So, theory is trying to point you towards some reality. The reality you have to see. The moment you see the reality, that is realization and that is knowledge. So, am I to think that uh, if I get the reality, so I will be automatically able to apply it or does it yes. give any other processes if I need to be, res if I need to have the resoluteness, the courage and the generosity. Yeah. So, if, am I to think that if I get the reality, if I get there, so I will be able to apply it automatically. Yeah. Or there are like further processes that I that need that I need to work with myself. So yeah, good question. So you will have the conviction that this is the way to live. So now you will start practicing. Practice. See, living is with the body. Body is habituated. Our mind also gets habituated. Now we have got this new conviction, a new direction in which I have to live. So, for this I have to practice living, right? So, I have to first initially give attention, okay, I have to keep in mind that I am respectful to you first, when I am speaking. So, this will be a conscious thing which you will do. Like you are learning to ride a cycle, the first time you ride, you are very careful to stumble and this. So, same thing will happen with this. Even though you have the conviction that you have to be respectful, you will still make mistakes. Because you don't know how to, you have not practiced it yet. So, but because you have conviction, you will keep trying at it and slowly, slowly because of this practice, you will become good at it. 
and one day it will become part of your nature like you sit on the bicycle and you reach the destination you don't know when you braked when you pedaled when you rang the bell what you reached so same thing will happen being respectful you will one day become part of your nature you want to have to consciously be respectful to somebody right okay mike 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 plus meaning equals to knowledge yeah the meaning which is reflected in my imagination matches with the reality in existence that is knowledge i have a question uh, about this representatives yes and uh, the systems you talked uh, that education uh, health and the other systems yes. how do they match each other for example if uh, a family uh, they are all farmers for example right yes. if they just choose one representative and uh, uh, will he address all the questions on all these parts or if he doesn't know about this how so yeah. uh, connected to is this problem okay okay right so somebody is coming from the farming background how will they address the other issues in the if they are the representative in the assembly right so first of all the the basic fundamental knowledge is common for them but the areas of expertise are different right so when you are represented say a family your family's whatever diverse needs are there you are aware of them so you can represent that to the group of 10 families in a group of 10 families also there are diverse needs but you can represent them at that level but now at the village level so you come from farmer side the other there is another group which is the uh, people who make the cloth maybe there is another group which makes uh, something else makes baskets or something like that so there are many diverse groups in the village they all will have representatives representation in this 10 assembly of 10 people at the village level so each will bring in their needs and requirements for that situation and because they have this approach that we have to coexist and we have to talk about these things in a manner and they'll come to decisions see in the end it is about being able to consider the other person once they decide this that this decision has to be implemented then you have to go to the committees of the education system health system production system trade system where the where the experts of those things are already working right that organization education can only be provided by people who are authentic in education health can only be provided by people who are authentic in health right so there are three levels of expertise that we talk about here one is in the area of work right the other is in the area of behavior and the uh, third is the area of knowledge right so work related behavior is another expertise so work the skill sets so somebody is a doctor it's a specialized thing you have to spend your whole lifetime to become specialized in that that is very much needed similarly somebody is say uh, in some other field like somebody is making uh, doing metallurgy it's a very uh, niche area they need to be experts in that so you have to spend a lifetime so people who do metal work and thing like that they also need so everybody has to spend a left lifetime into becoming experts so these five levels of organization say production so production will in at a village level will represent most of the production in that there may there might be many farmers there are few cobblers there are few people making pottery there are few people making something else they all get together the experts of that thing right and the production committee will have only the producers of various things represented there again the assembly will be of 5 10 people only not bigger than that right and again the representative structure can be taken now from the parallel structure suppose a group of villages needs to decide on education so the representative of education from each village will go and represent this at say district level and in our area these are the issues for the education in our area this is this issue so there is a parallel system of these five system which will be there 
we, this will work in consultation with the assembly, which is the representative, the true representative, where as these groups, the committees which we are talking about, are the membership comes from the fact that you are also expert in some field. So, there is some specialization there. Whereas, assemblies, there is no major specialization needed as such, but you need to have understanding of how humans work together, how decisions are made together, what is good for the society. So, these assemblies and these committees at every level exchange and they coordinate with each other. Any more questions on this? Give the other mic please, this is not working very well. Take this one. Just a question, and who is uh, the final policy maker? Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, who is the final policy maker? So, any policy which is to be adopted will come from the need for, say, policy regarding education, policy regarding trade, policy regarding health. The recommendations will come from the the five systems, committees of that level and the to the assembly of that level, they will recommend it and that they will decide. Okay. On the recommendations of the committees, the assemblies will be deciding it. Suppose, health committee has suggested we need to have some sort of a health thing done. It will go to the assembly, which will decide on this recommendation and they agree to it. Okay, yes, we need to do this and then it will be implemented. Final is assembly. Hmm? If there is a need to go above, right? So, see, there is no need for multiple roads. Like for roads, Say a district level thing can organize the roads, right, for this that area. And then there are national roads or state roads for which a state level committee can decide, right. So, but say roads in a neighborhood, this can be decided by the say village committee, how it can be organized, right. And then how it will it connect to the say the district level road. And then districts can decide what can be the internal network, but how will it connect to the state? So, there will be exchanges with this tier above you and tier below you. So, for national organization, these are the requirements they are coming. From the local level, there is coming. So, all the inputs come together at every level, the recommendations are there. And every level, there is a committee which is expert committee, which is studying the issue. So, it is not like these just general people sitting and deciding on issues which they do not know, like we do in parliament right now, right. That is why they have those parliamentary committees supposed to be, but they, they hardly function properly. So, the, you need expert committees. These expert committees will come from these five places. Okay. Any other slide on this? I think completed this part, no? Use the mic. Take the mic. Take the pink one. It works much better. We had uh, kind of touched upon this in the study of nature and order. Right and how there is complementarity and usefulness yes. in dif at different levels. Right. And so, when we understand order in nature, yeah. realization results in us also voluntarily, independently organizing in such a way. Yeah. yeah. So, the human organization will also work in complementary and usefulness. So, the lower levels will be useful for the higher levels, and the higher levels will be complementary for the lower levels in the tier system. And. Uh, the levels of the, of the participants at the same level are also complementary because yeah. complementary means that yeah. which allows to contribute to the higher, higher level. level. Yes, that is the yeah. So, 
i think the in our country at least all these structures are already there not really not, not really. fully not fully okay not fully. i was just thinking that they're already there but the spirit is not there that imandar uh, responsibility and authenticity is not there no we thought about is, huh. sorry complete ha huh, so no i'm just saying that you're saying that yeah. even in the structure there are some gaps yeah the major gaps because you see uh, it's a over generalization to say that the structures are these structures are designed for power centric rule for which you need authority to flow in a certain way so there are mechanisms of fear and greed which are in bed so these structures are meant for that the structures for uh, self motivated alignment for uh, uh, order will be different they they might look something in parallel might on the surface but internally they'll be very different so maybe the structures are there but the policies are uh, power centric no structures are also missing i okay. think they are missing okay okay because the structure is not just 10 number or a level it's the how you sit and discuss what is its purpose what are its activities what are its responsibilities that is what this determines the structure like very simply right now it's based on majority not consensus yes yeah but that method determines the structure of our parliamentary assembly right like representative model is from citizen to the assembly and there is only one assembly at the national level or one assembly at the state level because it is majority rule therefore the structure has been brought in so this structure won't be the same you will have 10 tier tiered level system so at national level maybe there are it is level till level 8 so there will be eight levels of representation there so the structure will also change speak in the mic please our st structure consists of a legislative a bureaucracy and a judiciary yeah. whereas here the judiciary is part of five committees yes. at every level yes and uh, there's no bureaucracy which like as such which is solely responsible for executing the, the decisions of the legislative it's going to be a participatory system but this is just very initial thoughts on this and this is all in imagination because we don't have this kind of a community right so these will evolve these ideas will evolve but these fundamentals are in place now at least in in form of ideas and building on these ideas logically is taking place little bit but we are also progressing in the direction of becoming realized ourselves and the more we become like that this will concrete further and it'll be take more much better shape much more Uh, then we will be able to communicate it in, in a much better way i would definitely like to know your comments on this how do you see this how does how what does it make you feel more human scale and makes much more sense because actually everyone's everyone's voice can you know through being represented can go up and everyone's concerns can be met right now it's kind of like a big you know faceless sea right. and just a few people whose voices are loud or whose money is loud their voices and their concerns get met and most people's don't get met right. so this would ensure that there's a lot more fairness and justice actually in terms of representation and meeting every, each other's needs in fact like such big decision like war are taken by few people and the whole nation has to face the consequences today where most people will not be in favor of war this is happening 
few politicians take the decision of war and common man has to invest their lives money everything to fight that war and this is happening all over the globe right now so majority doesn't want war or most people don't want war but some people for vested interest are taking that decision and because our structure is like that right now like in india for last several years our supreme court is making some decisions and those decisions go against the constitution but we are we are like because the structure is like that we can't question supreme court therefore we we are going by that and this this is changing the nature of the very constitution and for which this the supreme court was there so this whole feeling of helplessness and then along with that anger this built up anger in people this creates civil wars fight and and this is a never ending vicious cycle which keeps on going keeps on going sometimes some group becomes more powerful at other times other group becomes more powerful yeah it it's clear that um a group of realized people would uh, have a much more uh, sensible structure um but do you realize when you actually crunch the numbers that that must mean if there's families of 10 that's 120 million families in india so to have 120 million realized representatives is quite a feat yeah it won't it won't happen in one generation or of course generation. of course yeah. but i mean it, you know as soon as you start seeing those kind of numbers you go wow okay um just let me respond shortly for that 30 years back somebody said every citizen on this planet or every family on this planet will have a mobile phone in their hands that was unimaginable 30 years it has happened yeah but what i'm saying we have done things at very fast speeds with things which are not for which we have to exploit the whole planet and the whole movement has to take place on the planet this is something which all of us want so maybe not 30 but it, it might happen 300 years but it can happen that's all my point is no and i think also um as you said everyone wants it actually everyone actually wants to live in a, a sane and um sensible society yeah. um and to actually live with fairness and justice and all those qualities so it's just that at the moment people there's no kind of road map for that at all or there's no kind of blueprint for that um just but as it, if people started to realize that actually that this has been kind of really well thought out and there's a um there's there is actually something that could work if people just put their their energies behind it right. then you could see actually there could be quite a a a blooming of that growth yeah let's let me add one thing thought which came uh while listening to him remember the lockdown and the whole economic system just stopped and within the few days the air had cleared the animals were doing their own thing everything started seem to be working fine and then we who were in power we realized if the economy stops then we are powerless so the economy has to be brought back in not that lockdown is any way of living because no activities doesn't make sense but for that brief time we saw how things can improve if we stop making the mistakes so if we align ourselves with nature then things can really improve very fast we all got a glimpse of that yeah. i just want to say that you know even if we are in the process of trying to become realized as individuals and families and whatever a system like this uh would also like increase our own responsibility not just our own kind of what we get out of it but also our own uh participation yes. in a way that right now like suppose you have a good idea or something you discuss with a group of friends or you put it on your facebook page or yeah. insta whatever but actually this is not part of the system it has no impact on actually uh, contributing to the system or any change whereas if you actually thought that actually what i'm saying or i'm thinking what i'm doing has an impact because it does go through yes. then you'll put your more, more focused energy on actually what you really want as a family as you know community and stuff i think you'd also kind of 
you'd, you'd focus in a much more kind of productive way. So even yeah. if it's not perfect from the beginning, yes. that that um, that process already will have a much more uh, yeah useful yeah. impact. Yeah. So this this brings me to the point that a lot of time people ask me, you're taking workshops, are you realized? Right? That's an obvious question, right? So no, I'm not realized. But that doesn't mean I've not changed. I've not progressed in this. Where I was when I started this journey and where I am. And I all can I can also see if I was not on this track, I would not be anywhere near where I am right now. Right? That gives you a sense of well being, a sense of achievement, sense of confidence, because it shows that you can still go further. There is there is a goal which you can work for. And and in my conduct, when things have improved, they have improved for my family. When, because my family's conditions are improving, it is leading to consequence of our interaction with other families in a better way. So, this whole thing which she's saying that, that the journey itself is a gives you a sense of growing and a, a sense of well-being, and we are moving towards a better thing. That is very important because, in the end, humans have hope. And this hope should stay alive, that we can live in a right manner, and we can improve, and we can do much better. That it gives you hope, a lot of hope this way. That's what um, what you're saying also reminds me of how you know if you have a road map, it really centers you. And as you're saying, if you have a certain thought which is in probably a productive direction, but there is no road map as to how you can take it forward, you won't center yourself and work with it to build it. But if there is a road map, you have hope, uh, you then also hence have patience and also motivation to center yourself and focus on it. And that's where that patience resoluteness actually comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it ready for being passed in case needed. I think a very good thing about this system is that it, um, and a key difference I think with the current structure is that it, uh, like Pashadidi was saying, it activates people instead of pacifying them. Yeah. In the current system, we have a structure of ratification, like a shopping cart model of politics where every five years you go and sort of choose um, what other people think is um, good for society and then you sort of outsource your responsibility to them. And then they tell you what to do. And then you can go out and uh, live your own life, quote unquote. But it sort of separates people from coming together and uh, making creative contributions. But in a g And there, you know, you, you even have the one vote system, right? So the individual sort of takes priority. But individuals are then segregated. Yeah. Um, but in a group system of politics, I think indiv individuals come together then they have to be more active by default in that they have to make creative contributions and participate directly. Um, they have to participate directly in their local environment even or yeah. even in, within their own household. And what is really telling in, in the history of um, democracy, the word for this is actually anarchy. Yeah. But um, we know, you know, automatically when people hear the word anarchy, there sort of, you know, there is a huge sort of... Uh, um, assault yeah. on this way of thinking because it can be very dangerous to the current um, yeah. uh, system of things. The centralized system. Yes. So, in fact, this promotes authenticity at every level. Right? At the level of family, you have to be authentic. At the level of local community, you have to be authentic. At the other levels, also, you have to be authentic. Without that, you can't go there. So, authenticity is very important. In this. So, your improvement, your family's improvement, your local community's improvement, everything, everywhere you have space. And you can take responsibility, you can participate, you can contribute. I mean, this is what is needed. What you're saying, the passive democracy, yeah, we vote and then disconnect it, totally disconnect it, nothing to do with it. What is happening in parliament? When are the parliament sessions taking place? That information is also not known to most citizens. What are they sitting and talking about? What are the laws they are passing? No connect. Right? 
Now they are passing a law with that Prashant Bhushan ji was telling us the other day in the previous workshop that they are about to pass a law about these uh, pandemics, these fast spreading diseases in which if the government declares that it is a pandemic, all your citizen rights are suspended. They are passing that law. And not only in Indian parliament, in many parliaments across the world. Now, we have no clue of this. And we know the pharma companies can easily manipulate. They can create a panic situation for in the country, so that the government can take that control of the rights. Anyway, yeah. One thought of caution that appears to me though is that this the structure definitely uh, encourages growth, but can it ensure growth? Like, is a structure enough to you know lead to such growth? Absolutely. And that's often a concern. Structures merely will not deliver anything. It's the spirit of the in which these structures are utilized. That is what. Sir, uh, in present situation, in the structure, there are fears also, the four fears. Yes. So, the structure is, utilizes those fears for scaring the citizens and taking them in a different, fear and greed are the two tools that they use. Yes. Yes, please. Is it time? Yeah, it is time. <laughs> okay. So, the next session will, because now the content in one go has been completed, that is it. Now, we can go from the content of the first day till the last day, a journey, quick journey through it, what is being said, how it is being said, but I would like it to be participatory. What do you remember about that? What was said here? If we can add that to that, wherever you lack, I will complete it, right? From next session onwards, so let's do that. So, from say we talked about human, the study of human beings. Then we talked about how the our mind works, the four dimensions of living. Then our decision making. After that, we talked about uh, the order in nature. Then space and matter. I'm just saying very few broad topics, right? And then we went on to human conduct. Then we talked about the social organization. So all these topics, how do you see? Say everybody says one, one, two, two things. How you see that? What are the topics? Just we'll make a list and then just say one, one, two, two lines about it, right? That would be a good exercise. Okay? Chalo, let's come back at 11.30.